Hello Math 033 students. In this tutorial I'm going to be guiding you through the first part of step one for your Lining Things Up project. Now remember in this project we're going to be using some real data and Excel to analyze how the cost of an airline ticket depends on the flight distance. Now for the first part we need to access and record the data. So we're going to keep things simple by limiting our possible variables. We're only going to look at flights that are from Delta Airlines out of Detroit, which of course is the airport closest to our college. Um, well, at least the, the biggest airport close to our college. About the same kinds of flights. We're going to look at nonstop fares to 15 cities. We're using the same travel dates. The Saturdays at the end of the summer term, what better time to go for a trip? So we're going to go to Delta, Delta Airlines interactive flight route map, which is at that link there. It's a little bit slow loading, so don't be surprised um, if it takes a moment, especially if you're on a slow connection. It might take a few tries to get the map to work. We're going to choose 15 destination cities that you might like to visit for vacation using Detroit Metro Airport as the point of origin. This page also provides the distance between the cities and the cities it serves, Detroit and the cities it serves. These cities need not be in the USA. In fact, make sure for sure that you want to choose some that are not in the USA because that's going to be, um, for one thing, interesting for our data. For another thing, it's going to be farther distances. And for a third thing, it'll make it so that we can sort of compare international with domestic flights because if you only choose domestic flights, that's um, they have slightly different um, rates. So here's the interactive map right here. I already have the link up and I want to click on Detroit, which is right there. And you can zoom in a little bit if you want, and then you can click on show destinations. It's going to take it a moment. And poof, there come all the destinations. And if you hold down the control button and scroll very slowly with your mouse using the scroll button, you can actually zoom in and out. It actually is also over here on the far right. It's a little hard to see, but there's a little plus sign and a little minus sign. So you can zoom in and zoom out if you want. So you can see the destinations a little bit better. If you let your mouse hover over different cities and stuff like that, you can also see those. But we want to stick with Detroit. Now at the bottom of the screen, it says leaving from Detroit. There's 413 results. And there, are, if I click on sort by, I can see how they're sorted. And we want number of stops. So this is how it came up with me. Hopefully that's how it comes up with you. If not, if it's on destination or distance, you can just click on number of stops. Because we want our number of stops to be nonstop. We want it to be no stops at all. And this is an alphabetical order. So Akron is the first one with the A's and so on. If you scroll down, you can see all sorts of different A ones, B ones, right? There's Burlington, Vermont, and so on. There's Chicago, Illinois, and so on. And you can see the distance from Detroit Metro Airport to Cincinnati, Ohio is right here. It's 230 miles. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a whole bunch of different cities and you want to grab ones that are far away, ones that are close, ones that are in foreign countries. You can spot foreign countries usually because the distance will be much greater. <laughs> right, so there's Cancun, Mexico, great one to grab. So we can grab that one and then you can click on different pages and grab different cities. You want to grab some from each of the pages because they're all different alphabetically. So we're in the A through C's right now. And then if you want to click on a different page, let me grab page three, for example, have to wait. And there's page three. Now just keep in mind this background page, this map um, through Delta is a little bit finicky in terms of bandwidth. So if it says there's an error, just try again, try again. So it's, it's already given me a couple errors and I have a pretty good connection here. So don't, don't be upset if it takes you a few tries to get it to give you the page you're asking for. So there you go. You can see I'm in the M's. There's Miami, there's Milwaukee, there's Nassau, Bahamas, wow, that'd be nice, right? So we're gonna pick 15 different cities and we're gonna put them in Excel. Now to get Excel to open in this Windows version, you just click on the Windows screen and you can, I actually have an icon for it right here. It's a little green X like that. Or you can go up here into the search menu and click ex or type Excel. If you're on older Windows machines, that's fine too. You can find it in your um, program menu. So you just have to find your program menu and it'll show up and there's Excel right here. Okay. So I have Excel right in this. Um, this is called a workbook right here. This is the whole screen. The whole thing is a workbook and in each workbook, there are different sheets. So if you see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's different tabs on mine. That's showing you sheet one and sheet two. 
So on sheet one, I'm going to double click. And according to the instructions, I have to rename that tab data. It's called a worksheet. So there are multiple sheets into one workbook. It's sort of like overall the workbook, that's why it's called a book, is a binder. And each of these sheets is like a sheet of paper in that binder. And before I go any further, I want to save. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to save as, I'm going to save it somewhere that I'm going to be able to access it easily and quickly later. So I'm going to save it to my computer. I'm actually, me personally, I'm going to put it on my desktop, but you could put it into any folder that you will know where the heck it is later on. Now, keep in mind, if you're working on a school computer, you want to email it to yourself. You want to put it in your G drive. So whatever your drive is on your um on your school computer that you want to put it in there. Um, you want to upload it. Me personally, I'm going to put it on the cloud um, in my Google Drive so I can do anywhere, any of those things. So I'm going to call it lining up project video, but you would call it um, whatever it is required for your project. Let's see if there were any requirements given to you here. Yes, indeed there were. So you're supposed to save it, um, your Excel file in the format your last name pro dash project two. So if I was going to do that, let's see, I would call it, my last name is Tucky. So I would call it Tucky dash project two, like that. And then save. Okay. So that's how you have to save it. And I would recommend not waiting until step four to do that. Um, they have it written up here in step four, but I would actually do it right at the beginning and then just keep saving as you go, right? Now, remember, you want to have it saved somewhere um, on a drive or on your um, computer, but you're going to have to be able to send it to yourself because if you're working on a school computer, when those computers get shut down, everything that's on them goes away. So you have to make sure that you're saving it either onto your student folder, your student OneDrive or whatever, or save it onto a thumb drive or a jump drive that you can email. And I would actually also recommend emailing it to yourself. I've had a lot of students have their drives go bad on them, but they emailed themselves a copy. So that's another good thing to do. Email yourself a copy of the file before you shut down for the day. Okay. So here in my Excel file, I'm going to label these cities. Then I want um, one way distance and then the next one I'm going to call round trip distance. Now a couple of things are going on. For one thing these were not these wouldn't actually be bolded for you but I want them to be bold because I want to be able to notice that these are the labels for the top of my column and actually I'm going to need cost for over here in D. So I want these to be nice and bold. So I'm going to highlight all four of these and I'm going to go up here on the home ribbon. See, there's an insert ribbon, there's a page layout ribbon. I'm going to go to the home ribbon. And if you hit the little B there, or if you just hold down the control and B buttons, it'll make those items bold. Okay, so then I want to make these columns a bit wider. So I'm going to highlight all four columns. I do that by holding down my left mouse button near the A. It turns into that arrow, kind of kind of a pointing downward arrow. And then I hold down the left mouse button. I drag right until I have all four columns, A through D, captured. And then I want to move my arrow till it's um, over my cursor, excuse me, till it's hovering over the line between like the D and the E or the C and the D. It actually doesn't matter. And it turns into a double-sided arrow. And I'm going to make it click hold down with my left mouse button and drag to the right and it makes all four of the columns wider and I'm going to do it again I want to be able to see the words round trip distance one day way distance I'll adjust this again later but that's good for right now all right so I'm going to start typing in some cities like I saw Cancun in there that was kind of fun I would like to go to Cancun I saw Nassau but I also want to get some places that are close like Cleveland and I want to get some places that um, are in the U.S. that are farther away, like Bangor, Maine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to go grab 15 different cities from that list. So get them from um, each of the pages, get a bunch of different ones, get ones that are close, get ones that are far, get ones that are um, nearby, oh, excuse me, not nearby, um, U.S., and ones that are not U.S. and everything else in between. So you just have to grab 15 different places you'd like to go for your summer vacation in August. And when you also grab them, you want to make note of their distance. So if I'm going to the JFK airport in New York, that'd be 508 miles. 
if I'm going to LaGuardia, it's 500. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one. So I'm going to go JFK. So New York, New York. And I'll say that's 508 miles right here. And then Cancun was, and I'll have to go find Cancun. Cancun won't be on this page. I'll have to go back to the A's, the, to the page one. There, I got page one up. And Cancun was 1480. And then Cedar Rapids doesn't sound that exciting, but Charleston sounds exciting. And that's um, Charleston, South Carolina, 670. So I'm going to keep typing up different destinations and different um, distances to those destinations. On a totally different note, as I'm typing these up, just keep in mind, it's going to be easier for you later on if the cities are in alphabetical order. So pick a few from each of the pages. You know, you've got five pages to pick from. So pick, you know, three or four from each page or so um, and things that look interesting to you because it's going to be, you're going to have to go find the costs for these places and it'll be easier if you're going in alphabetical order possibly um, as you try to search through flights and distances and things like that. There, I have a whole bunch of different cities in and their distances. Now, one th other thing I would recommend to you when, as you're doing this, put in places that interest you. Put in places you really want to go to. Put in places that are beautiful or in interesting, like Rome, you know, things like that. Of course, I find Rome fascinating. You, there's a lot of places you can see on the map and on the screen. The only other thing I'm going to tell you is that this whole interactive map thing is really finicky. So um, as much as you'd like to take, you know, a few different ones from each different page, you know, that's the ideal. But if you're, if it's being finicky, just get a few from, you know, get five from one page and five from another and then five from something else. Right? Don't try to get all five because you're going to go insane waiting for the website to stop giving you errors. So, but you don't want them all from the same page. That's just not as interesting, right? Because it'll all be L through M cities. So, you know, try to spread it out and try to make it something that you really want to go to. All right, so this is one way distance, but you want to go round trip. So you want to travel to Bangor, Maine, but you want to get back from Bangor, Maine or to Cancun. Maybe you don't want to come back from Cancun, but you're going to have to. To be able to pay for Cancun, you have to come back to your job. So we want to find the round trip distance. Now, the way to do this is to take the one way distance and multiply it by two. So the way I'm doing this, let me show it. I type the equal sign. So I click on the cell, cell C2, sort of like playing battleship. You have to know what column you're in. I'm in column C. And then what row I'm in, I'm in row two. So this is cell C2. So I type equals. And then what I want to do is to take whatever the distance is from, from column B. So if I click on B2, and then I want to multiply it, so I press the times button by 2. Enter. And we'll actually figure out what that distance was. Now you could do that for each one of these. Equals B3 times 2 and so on. But Excel has a really nice feature in that if you use cell referencing, that's what this is. This is called a cell reference. And if you click back up in this formula, it puts a little box around the reference that you're using. It's saying, hey, I'm using that cell right there, that blue one. So what it will do is Excel will actually fill that column for you down the whole column, that formula for you down the whole column. Now here's how it works. When you click on the cell, it's highlighted in green. And in the bottom right corner, there's a little, it's called a handle. It's a little box. And if you let the mouse hover over it, it turns from this kind of fat plus sign into a little black plus sign. And then I can click, hold down with my left mouse button and drag my mouse down the column and I get to the bottom and I lift up on my left mouse button and it actually fills in every single one of these. So let me show you. Here's Sao Paulo, Brazil. If I click on the formula, you can see it's referring to that cell. Enter. If I go click on the one for Paris, I click on the cell, you can see it talked about the one for Paris. Enter. So it made the cell references change. So the first one uses B2, the next one uses B3, the next one uses B4 and so on. We have now calculated the round trip distance, the one way distance for every one of these. And now that I know my cities are this wide, I'm actually going to go up here and I'm going to turn my um, cursor into that double sided arrow between the A and the B. I'm going to double click and it'll make it smaller so that it actually fits the words for my all my cities. C Traverse City was the longest one and it now accommodates that. 
So we've now done the first part of step one. We've count, figured out all our cities. We figured out the distance for each of those cities and the round trip distance for each of those cities. And we rename the, the sheet data down at the bottom. 